Good morning, Life Kids. It's another beautiful Sunday morning. I'm at the church today because uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that even though we're not meeting in person, do you guys hear that bird? That was a loud bird. I'm sure it's loud on this video too. It's loud. It's loud for me when I'm trying to record. Uh, you know, I am, I'm so grateful for our church family and I know that we're not meeting together uh, as life kids right now just with everything going on but I'm so grateful that I get moments that I get to see you guys still and interact with you and I hope you guys are doing well we're gonna continue our series on thankfulness and you know it's a perfect month to do that because of Thanksgiving uh, but also just to look at what God is still doing in our world today you know I know that it we, we do see negative things and we do see things that aren't very encouraging and we've all had definitely a different year, but uh, there's so much to be thankful for. You know, Jesus knew that this was gonna be going on right now. He knew that, you know, we were gonna be able to find creative ways to, deal, to do school still and still meet together as life kids and still learn about him. And I am so grateful that the Lord has, number one, given us technology that we can do things like this, that we can still learn about Him and learn about how much He loves us. And, you know, just take time out today to, to look at all of the good that you have in your life and thank Jesus for just being Him and always providing and always giving us uh, a reason to wake up in the morning and share His love with other people. And just continue to be thankful and make sure that you tell your friends and your family things that you're thankful for. But most of all, tell Jesus that you're thankful for him and that he died on the cross for us. So today we're going to learn another Bible story on thankfulness and engaging with Jesus. And I hope you guys love it. I know I love watching these on Sundays and I am so grateful for you guys and for this time that we get to spend with each other this morning. I love you guys and enjoy our service. Before the day I took a breath, you had a plan for my every step. You promised to always be by my side. I believe that you are the way, you are the truth.
Don Q Shu In. Don Q Shu In. Wow, German is our hard language. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. I'm learning how to say thank you in other languages because if I ever travel the globe, I still want to have gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. But saying thank you is really hard as it turns out. For instance, in Armenia, if you were to open the door for me, I'd have to say, Kanorakalution, if I wanted you to know that I was grateful. <gasps> or, if you gave me a stick of gum in Mongolia, I'd have to say thank you by saying, Beyalarla. And then, if we were in Spain and you gave me directions to the biblioteca, I'd have no choice but to say grace e ooze. Grace gracias. Grace gracias! Oh, I actually know that one. Nine times out of ten, it seems like we forget to show gratitude when we should. But as you'll see in today's story, saying thank you doesn't have to be that hard. Even in Romania! Mall to a tech. Everybody? Yeah, that seemed right. Devon Shubab. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke. Chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Outside the village on the border between Samaria and Galilee lived 10 lepers. We didn't know their name or their stories, but we did know at least one of them was a Samaritan, a group that Jewish people distrusted. Call that man Zach. Hi there. I'm sorry. Not allowed to shake your hand. Leprosy was a painful skin disease, and there was no doctors or medicines to treat it. But even worse than the source were the loneliness. Lepers weren't allowed to be around anyone who were healthy, not even their own families. They had to keep more than a social distance. So if Zach had a wife or kids, probably hadn't seen them in years. Oh, my little boys, all grown up by now, I bet. The 10 lepers' life seemed hopeless. All they can do was stand back and yell at anybody who passed by. Stay away! Don't come close. But we do need food. If you could just leave some under that willow tree by the creek, uh, we'd be grateful. Then, one day, news reached the lepers of travelers approaching along the border road. Big crowd. Here it's that Jesus fella. The teacher? They say he makes sick people well. You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Why would he care about you? Hey, you know, what have I got to lose? Zach hobbled toward the road walking stick in hand. The other leopards straggled after them. They can see a crowd now, traveling along the road. People won't like us standing so close. I'm not throwing away my shot. Zach can see faces now. The crowd grouped around a man in the middle. The man had a strong face and kind eyes. Jesus, master, have pity on us. To the leopard's surprise, Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. Jesus! Master Jesus! Jesus over have here. pity please. on us! Have pity on us! The crowd around Jesus backed away, whispering. Jesus stood firm as Zach and the lepers dared to limp closer. Jesus! Master! Have pity on us! As the lepers neared, Jesus took a long, clear look. Everyone went silent. Zach could hardly breathe. Then Jesus smiled. Go, show yourselves to the priests. Zach gasped. The only way a leper could approach a priest was if that he confirmed that he had been healed. But as Zach glanced down, his heart sank. His knees and his feet were still shriveled and splotchy. His knees still ached. Oh. Jesus moved on and the crowd followed. The lepers stared at each other. Well, that happened. I don't get it. 
Well, we should go to the priests, like he told us. Uh, I guess it can't hurt. Any more than it already does. Limping, the lepers headed out across the field towards the town. They hesitated as they reached the creek. We'll have to wade across. Painfully, the man clambered down the bank. Zach's stick got caught in the twisted root of a willow tree. Oof. The stick went flying, and he tumbled to the ground. Ouch! Instinctively, he jumped to his feet. How'd you do that? Do what? Just jump up. Zach glanced down again. This time, his feet and his legs were strong and whole, skin clear and healthy. Look! My skin, it's clean. The other man glanced down at their own arms and legs and bodies. I'm all better, woohoo! The lepers laughed and danced till they cried, amazed at what Jesus had done. You gotta get to the priest. Race you. The lepers splashed across the creek, hurling towards the town. Zach stopped at the water's edge the others ran ahead. I'll get to see my boys again. But even as Zach imagined the joy that would come, a face flashed in his head. Jesus, he's healed me. He's the one who's made me whole. Turning back, Zach hurried toward the road. He ran fast, catching up to Jesus and the crowd as they reached the village. Jesus, Jesus. The crowd parted quickly as Zach headed straight for Jesus. Praise God, I'm well. Zach threw himself down on the dusty road at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Zach lifted his head. Dust mixed with tears of joy. Jesus smiled, but his eyes searched the road behind him. Weren't all 10 healed? Where are the other nine? As Zach shook his head, Jesus turned to the crowd. Didn't anyone else return to give praise to God except this outsider? Everyone was silent. It was clear that Zach was the only one. Jesus smiled down at him. Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Zach leapt to his feet as he hurried to see the priests. He had delayed his chance to see his family by a short time, but it was worth it to see the man who had given him back his life. So, there were 10 guys healed by Jesus. All of them were probably really grateful, but only one of them took the time to actually say it out loud. I think sometimes we're kind of like the nine guys who didn't say anything. It's not that we're not grateful that mom made dinner and washed the dishes. We are grateful. We just assume mom knows that we're grateful. So we forget to say, Thank you. And we're definitely grateful when a teacher takes extra time to help us with schoolwork. We just, I don't know, don't feel comfortable telling her, thank you. And anytime we take a moment to think about all the things God has done for us, our hearts are probably overflowing with gratitude. But we don't actually tell him, thank you. You probably feel grateful all the time. To parents, to teachers, to friends, to God to the guy who bags your groceries. All you need to do is remind yourself to take two seconds to say the words, thank you. That's the one thing to remember today. Say thank you. Or if you prefer, you could say, arigato, maki, terim, terimaka, si. Thanks everybody. See you next time. Feeling down, you pick me up. Sing.
say thank you for the way you love me. I wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I just wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I wanna say thank you. Just wanna say thank you. Yeah. T H A N K Y O U. Thank you. Thank you. T H A N K Y O U. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Verse two. I'm grateful for the way. My friends.